All right, let's see. Somewhere. All right, well, good evening, ladies. Good evening. And good evening to whoever else will join. Good evening, everybody. Oh, there I am. Yeah, that's funny. That's it. All right. Oh, there I am. Oh, turn the volume down. All right. All right. And one more thing here. Sorry for the delay. All right. All right. Good deal. All right. So we are going to be Psalm 48 through 49. Well, starting in Psalm 48, and uh, we will work our way through that. A um, couple of things that I do want to announce just so that I can get them on record. Um, let's see. One, uh, and uh, Sister Jackie's already kind of mentioned it. Uh, we're still praying for uh, Lois Bryant and the, the Bryant family as they mourn the passing of Miss Alberta Bryant. Um, we still do not have any updates to when the um, when the service will be, so we are we are just going to hold on, uh, hold on to that and be ready to do whatever needs to be done. Um, I also want to share um, that we need to also be in prayer for Karen, Sister Karen Turner, her family. Um, she had a cousin. Uh, who has been uh, found murdered, unfortunately. And oh, so, oh, as oh, you can imagine, God. the family is uh, family's a little upset about that. Well, a lot upset about that. So, uh, we will do what we can do. And one thing that we can definitely do is to keep them in prayer. So, I just ask that, uh, you know, we, uh, this is one of those times, and I, I tell us all the time, when you don't know what to say, say nothing. True. Okay, let's be honest. There aren't any words. True. There aren't any words that will fix it. So let's just be there for them and love them through this. And that will be, remember Job and his friends. Yeah. Uh, they, they were good for that first week because they said nothing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until they opened their mouths and started talking <laughs> that all the trouble happened. And so um, I just encourage us to be, uh, be there for them that way. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is all that I have at this moment. So let us go ahead uh, and uh, open with a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. Eternal God, um, wow, do we ever need you uh, between tragedy, between life happening, between uh, racism in the country, between COVID up and down, between all of these things. The one constant is you. And so, Lord God, we have come and gathered here this evening so that we could hear from you, so that we could know you better. Because if we know you better, we will be able to navigate all the things that are going around in this world better. And so, Lord, for a little while, while we might mention things, help us to not focus on anything outside of you. Lord, be just so upfront with us that we can't see anything during this time besides you. And so I just ask that you will speak, that you will be loud and clear in our minds and in our spirits, Lord God, that we might be transformed because of this time we are spending together in your word. Lord, we pray for uh, Karen and her family. We pray for Lois and her family. Lord, we pray that you would be the comforter that you are. You are the God of all comfort. And so these are the moments that you show up and really show out. And But Lord, not just you, show us what we need to do. Show us how to be people of comfort as well as you have comforted us. And uh, just help us to be the church that was built for these moments, not just for the good times, but the church that was built for the sad times as well. So now, Lord, be with me as the teacher of your word and be with all of us as students as we seek your face as we seek your knowledge, as we seek your wisdom, as we seek how to live a better life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right.
So, hey, uh, let's see what we got going on here. All right. So, Psalm 48. Last, uh, last week, we actually, uh, uh, Jackie didn't slow me down this time <laughs> last week. And uh, I was able to get us, uh, we, out, we actually got through 47 and into 48. We read the first half of uh, Psalm 48. And so um, let's see. Hey, Sister Daphne, how are you? I'm not, it's good to see your name on the screen, that's for sure. Okay, um, Sister Lampkins. Yes, sir. Would you mind reading the entire 48th Psalm, please? Uh -huh. Read Psalm 48. Okay. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Beautiful in its loftiness, the joy of the whole earth. Like the heights of Zephon is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. God is her citadel. He has shown himself to be her fortress. When the kings joined forces, when they advanced together, they saw her and were astounded. They fled in terror. Trembling seized them there, pain like that of a woman in labor. You, dis you destroyed them like ships of Tarshish, scattered by an east wind. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord Almighty, in the city of our God, God makes her secure forever. Within our temple, O oh God, we meditate on your unfailing love, like your name, O oh God. Your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Mount Zion rejoices. The villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments. Walk about Zion. Go around her, count her towers. Consider well her ramparts. View her citadels, that you may tell of them to the next generation. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. All right, great. Thank you so much. Sister Vicki, uh, hello. I, I didn't speak to you earlier, but thank you for letting me see you. So it's good to see you as well. Hey, Pastor. Hey, everybody. Hey, Vicki. And, and Sister Slade is down there on the phone too. And so Sister hey, Slade is your number now. Yes. So it's good to have you online as well. So Psalm Thank 48. You. We yes, already sir. talked about the first eight verses, so kind of want to cover that relatively quickly. And again, I I am a true believer that uh, there are no such thing as accidents. So these things happen on purpose. So we're in this psalm and we're in these two psalms because of what's going on around us. And I told you last week, I love this psalm because it mentions the fact that when kings join forces and when they advanced against us, um, some of us feel like we're being attacked by in a whole lot of different directions. Home life, work life. Heck, unfortunately, some people feel like they're attacked by the church. We're attacked emotionally, spiritually, in all of these ways. And the joy of this psalm is the fact that it says when they all attacked, what happened to them? Anything? Anybody? Well, I would say that uh, we turn to God for a refuge when uh, we being attacked. Uh, what about you, Ed Pastor? Uh, I, I was in verse four when it said all of when the kings joined forces when they advanced together. Something happened to the kings after that point. They marvel at what they saw. And what'd they see? Uh, this is uh, fear took hold of them, like the pain of a woman uh, in childbirth. Mm -hmm. And it must. It says with the. It, it's talk, It says when you break the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. Okay. They were tro they were troubled. They were troubled, but what were they troubled by? Go back up to verse three. Destruction, okay. Verse three says, God is in her palaces. He is known as her refuge because All God. Right. 
All right, so let's go context. So again, when, when we look at scripture, we got to look at context. You just take one verse. Like, I don't know what that means. That's why you got to read the verses around it, read the chapter, all those kind of things. Uh -huh. And okay. so the middle chapter, middle verse, verse four says, Yay, the king, when the kings joined forces, when they advanced together, they saw her and were astounded. They fled in terror. So we got to say, well, who is her? Yes. The her here is the her that was spoken of in verse uh, verses one through three. Where it talks about God is in her citadel. God. God. So the was when they saw the city, but they weren't afraid of the city. They were right. afraid of God that's in the city. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. And so when we think about the city, remember, city symbolically is us. And so our enemies will not be afraid of us. They're not going to look at any of us and go, oh, we scared of you. Because if they were, they wouldn't have advanced against us in the first place. But when they get a closer look, what they should see is the God in us. Uh, and the God in us will cause them to flee. It, it's not our cussing at them. It's not our beating them up. It's not our, you know, kung fu grip and all of that kind of stuff. That's not what's going to scare our enemies away because our battle is not a physical battle. Our battle is a spiritual battle. Right. And because our battle is spiritual battle, we need a spiritual savior. We need a spiritual fortress. And we have one in the almighty God. He dwells in. He is the fortress. And when he is there, he will take care of all of that stuff. And that is the, this, this time that we're in, that's why we need faith. Because we want to run around and do something. I got to do something. I got to do something. And last, well, two weeks ago, we read where God said, be filled. And know that I am God. He didn't say run around like a chicken with your head cut off and I'll catch up with you because I am God. That's not what he said. But that sure is what we act like sometimes. All right. And so there is a point where in the midst of the struggle, we have to be still and let God be God and show our confidence in him. And when we show our confidence in him, he will show his strength through us. Okay. And so uh, we finished off last week talking about those last, uh, the uh, verse 8, where it says, as we have heard, we have seen in the city of the Lord Almighty, in the city of our God, God makes her secure for a couple of days. This is God is established forever. God, God, God established her as long as they in church. No, we'll establish forever. And, and, and there, are no, there are no caveats on that? No, no. I, I just want to make sure. Here we see in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, God will establish it forever. Yeah. I, I love it when I ask <laughs> Jacob to push The city it. belongs to God. Yeah, the city, and, and symbolically, who is the city of God today? We are. We, we are. And so if, this, if God dwelled in that city yeah. and the city was secure forever, what does that say about us? That we are secure forever. We are secure forever. Are you sure? Yes. He said it in the word. You just well, you just I, said it. Hey, I, look. You, you know, uh, we we talked about this before. You know, people used to say, "God said it. I believe it. That settles it." But see, <laughs> we're forgetting a step in there. God said it because we're Do on we, Bible study we, on Wednesday. We say we believe it. Yeah. But the next thing we got to do is walk in it. And yeah. then that will settle it. Wow. Because there's a lot of people who believe stuff they don't walk in. A lot of people believe yeah, they should eat better. If you didn't walk in it, it didn't settle it. it exactly. Amen, Mara. And so oh. a lot of people believe they need to eat better. They believe eating better is right for them. Uh -huh. and, they, and they at McDonald's right now. Yeah. Getting <laughs> two Big Macs and a Diet Coke. Yeah. So believe. You have to go that what, fast. What did James tell us? <laughs> faith without <laughs> faith without works is dead. So yeah. you can believe something. Hey, guess what? The devil believes God exists. Yeah, he yeah. knows. He ain't right. He ain't really believe. He knows. He knows. he knows. he knows. But that doesn't settle anything because he refuses to walk in it. That's right. And so as we read these verses, and, and when that word Selah comes up and it says, stop and uh, think about this, are we walking in the security that God provides it? Sister Daphne Moore on Facebook, she said, if we don't walk in it, you don't truly believe it. Wow. 
We have seen it. And so the challenge for us is, I, yes, I, I got it, because I talked about it on Sunday in my sermon. Hey, we need to talk. We need to speak things. But if our if what we're saying doesn't match what we're doing, we're wasting our time. What did Jesus say? They honor me with their lips. Ooh, I'm secure in you. I'm secure in Jesus. I'm so secure. And then as soon as we, we hang up from Bible study, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? How are we going to make it? But I... I I thought you were just secure. Is security only, and, well, I, I got it. We are only secure as long as Zoom is on and people can see us. No. No, no, okay. So, so the challenge for us is to walk in what we claim we believe. Walk you know, by you, faith and not by sight. Hey, say that. Walk by faith and not by sight. There you go, because what we're seeing, well, you know what we're seeing? We're seeing verse four, kings joining forces and attacking us. People have called me, talking about, Pastor, so many things are coming against me. And I'm thinking, mm hmm yeah, I, I wish I could stop them. But that's biblical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's biblical. But you know what else is biblical? God getting the victory. <laughs> mm -hmm. Over and over again, we are shown how all of these things come against the people of God. You find me someone in the Bible who did not have people, things, and situations and circumstances coming against them. You can't find that. Why? Because God's trying to show us that when, the, when this happens, I will be there. Okay? Amen. All right. So, starting at, picking up at verse 9, Psalm what are we, 48, verse 9. So, within your temple, O God... I will meditate on all the things that are wrong in my life. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Mara? Mara, That's you okay? exactly what I've been doing. I, I just, is that what the verse says? I'll be honest. Is that what the verse says in your temple? No, no, no that's not what the verse says. says. Are you sure? No, that's not what the verse says. Pastor, I said it. You should just agree with me. Yeah. No, sir. We can't agree with you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. What does the verse say, Vicki? 48 uh, eight and verse uh, 8. You verse said? 9. I'm sorry, verse 9. Verse I'm sorry, nine. verse 9. We okay. have thought, oh God, on your love and kindness in the midst of your temple. Mm -hmm. All right. Sonia? Again. Sonia, what version do you have? I have to give you the New Testament You're too. You're muted. Uh, well, I have a couple. Uh, I got the I have New King James and the Passion Translation. So, um, give me the New King James. We have thought, oh God, on your loving kindness in the midst of your temple. Okay. Anybody got the NIV? Hey, of course. Hey, hey. Of course. <laughs> Sean, what you got? Okay, within your temple, oh God, we meditate on your unfalling love. Okay, great. And, and really, that, that's what I want. Because con I got, we got to think about, um, I got one verse that says contemplate, but I really wanted the word meditate. What does meditate mean? To focus to mull, on. To mull it over. Focus on, mm -hmm. mull it over. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay. And so he says, uh, hello, Mr. Take Mr. It Payne. In. We are on Psalm 48. Verse nine. Okay, so in your temple, I will mull over. I will contemplate what? I will think about. Your loving kindness, your unfailing love. I got, I got loving kindness, I got unfailing love. Vicki, what you got in yours? What is he thinking about? What is he talking about thinking about in verse nine? I'm going to agree with Sister Virginia. Uh, I'm looking at yeah. King James verses uh, as well. King James said, he maketh wars to cease up unto the end of the earth. Oh, yeah, he that, right. that, that's not Psalm 48. Oh, it's sure ain't Pastor. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was 46. <laughs> we have thoughts of the loving kindness, O oh God, in the midst of thy temple. Okay, so loving kindness. Yes. Unfailing love. 
So I am mulling this over. So, okay, here we go. In your temple. So he means that when you get to 1603 Rex, then you will meditate on the unfailing love of God. That's no, you're supposed, right. you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to do it. Our body yes. is the temple. Oh, uh, Jackie, say, say that again, Jackie. Our body is the temple. Oh, so Amen. whenever you are in your body. Yes. So if you have an out of body experience, you don't have to do this. <laughs> but don't look at me like that, Vicky. <laughs> you're folks. You go all over the place. <laughs> If you have an out-of-body experience, you don't have to do this. But the psalmist says, when I'm in my when I'm in the temple, when I'm in the temple, what am I going to spend my time meditating on? On, on God's loving oh, God. God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, so, so Mara, Mara kind of threw it out there. So what have we been thinking about? Meditating on. Mulling over. Everything that's wrong everything that's wrong everything that's wrong and so we so and we wonder why we have an issue we have an issue because everything again we reap what we sow in our thought life we are sowing discord because that's all we're thinking about is discord we're sowing pain we're sowing anger we're sowing all of these things and then we're surprised when we look out in the world and that's all we're seeing and so this is not about a denial of what's wrong. This is about focusing on what's right. Mm -hmm. you, if you've got DirecTV or Dish Network, you've got a few hundred channels. But most of us don't watch them all at one time. We focus on one. And mm -hmm. usually we focus on one that we like. Yeah. Somehow in your mind, you've got millions of channels. You can think about what the people did to you yesterday. You can think about what the people did to you 22 years ago. You can think about how this didn't work and that didn't work. You got all these channels that you can you can focus on. And the psalmist says, uh-uh. Focus on God's loving kindness. Some other versions will say God's mercy. Actually, what is how does the passion? You got the passion. Does the passion have this in there? Passion trans no, the passion's not necessarily a translation, though. It, it's a paraphrase. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it says, uh, Lord, as we worship you in your temple, we recall over and over your kindness to us and your unending love. Okay. Oh, and, and, and so so my question for us is again, what are we what are we spending our time thinking on? What what, what is the dom what are the dominant thoughts that we are having in our mind? Because God, we have to think about what we think about. And if I'm thinking about what she did to me, and I'm thinking about what he said to me, and I'm thinking about how he looked at me, and I'm thinking about all that, no wonder my neck all doing like this all the time. But for, the psalmist says, actually, and if it was only here, I would say, don't worry about it. The psalmist didn't know what they were talking about. But if you read Philippians 4, again, God, through Paul, speaks and hold on, let me uh, let me find that real quick because I, I don't want because some of y'all for some reason y'all don't seem to believe me when I quote scripture to you. <laughs> I write it down, <laughs> which is probably a good thing. <laughs> so Paul says, Philippians four verse eight. Wait a minute, I'm <laughs> hey, Jackie's like, yeah, look, I don't trust you, bro. I want to see okay. it. Okay, I'm, I'm good. Let's go. <laughs> Philippians four eight in the yeah. NIV says, oh. finally. Really? Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Meditate on these things, yes. That's a command. Yes. It's not a suggestion. Paul's trying to help you have peace in your life. And again, it's impossible to have peace if we're always thinking war. If we're always thinking all of those thoughts that we were fighting with and all of those people that we're fighting with, and I just want peace in my life. Well, change the way you think. Yes. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Not mm -hmm. by the renewing of your friends. Right. Renewing not of by your the mind. renewing of your job. Not by the renewing of your bank account. 
by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And when we think differently, we will live differently. And even in Amen. the midst of the same stuff. And so the challenge for us, the psalmist offers us a great challenge. We need to spend more time. Every once in a while, Linda will see me sitting there and she'll go, what you thinking about? And usually, because I am who I am, I ain't thinking about nothing. I'm just letting my mind go. Hmm. But if I ask most of us, what are you thinking about? Well, I'm thinking about what she said and I think about what he did. Somewhere in there, say, you know what? I'm just thinking about how good God is. Hmm. I had a conversation with somebody the other day and they were telling me everything. Oh my gosh, this is wrong and this is bad and this is wrong. And this was, and I, I asked them, I said, well, what's right? Mm -hmm. Is anything right? I was hoping they'd say, well, my past is pretty good, but didn't even get that. <laughs> everything was wrong. Everything. And, and, and what that tells me, that's what this person was meditating on. Wow. And that's all they could see. And so Paul tells us, the psalmist tells us, hey, let's change the way we think. Uh, I think it was a writer who said, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you, you can stop it from making a nest in your hair. Yeah. The thoughts are gonna come. The thought coming isn't the issue. It's when you grab the thought and you hold the thought and you nurse the thought and you burp the thought and you take, oh, this, oh, look at this. Oh, how bad life is. Mm. And then when that, when that thing is full grown, you got issues. There's got to be a point where you do one of these. You know, when you do flies and gnats, some of us need to do that spiritually, get them thoughts out of there. You can't stay here, thought, because I'm going to focus on something else. Okay? So within your temple, within, for us, within my body, oh God, I will meditate on your unfailing love like your name, O God, your praise reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. And so when we talk about the name of God, we're not just talking about the letters. The name here is symbolic of character. So somebody is a character of God, the attributes of God. Somebody give me a, give me, give me a character trait of God, a, an attribute of God. His, his goodness. Goodness? Loving. Loving. Peace. Peace. Mm -hmm. Merciful. Righteous. Mer righteous. Mercy. Righteous. Myers merciful. Righteous. Yes. His grace. Grace. So, holy. Holy. Say it again. Yes, holy. Holy and. Magnificent. Provider. <laughs> all right. Yes. All, all of that. And, and so here, here, here's why this verse becomes important as well. <laughs> he says your character, Mercy. all of these traits extend how far to the end to the end uh, of the earth uh, now look just so you know i've lived at the end of the earth i've lived at both ends of the earth uh in north dakota and new mexico it, but you know what all of those things you just said about god they're there forever too. and forever they're there too and yeah. so sometimes we get this feeling that we're way out, that God's love, his powerful, his all-knowing nature, his forgiving spirit, somehow it's not reaching where we are. Oh. You can't get to me. I'm too far. Miss Washington, we are uh, Psalm 48, uh, looking at verse 10. Um, and so, and we get that feeling that it, for some reason, we, we, we are out, we have outrun God. Oh. But last I checked, and the psalmist helps us. He says, your name extends to the end of the earth. No matter where I go. The, David says in Psalm 139, and we'll read that one uh, when, we, when we get there, heck, two, three years from now, by the time we get to Psalm 139. But he says, where can I hide from your presence? He, he says, I can't get from you. And we need to hold on to that, especially in these times when we feel like we're alone, when we feel like God doesn't see me. Because all of those traits you named and so many more are always true wherever we are. In the midst of our worst situation, he's still loving. He's still forgiving. He's still all powerful. He's still all knowing. Well, I don't feel it. Whether you feel it or not, it's still true. It's a fact. You know, it was raining, Allison. We had a big storm last night, and it was raining pretty hard, and I didn't feel any of it. Right. But that didn't mean it wasn't raining. Mm -hmm. 
just because I didn't feel it didn't change the fact. Just because you don't feel God's all-knowing grace, his mercy, all of that, doesn't mean it's not true. Mm -hmm. And so we need, again, this is, a, this is a mindset thing where I'm at because there's a little voice that's telling you, God don't love you. Mm -hmm. You too far away. You ain't been in church since March. You ain't good enough. But if God is always these things, right. then that voice is lying. So actually, we'll put it this way. Either the voice is lying or the book that we're reading is lying. You make the choice. You, you pick whichever one you want to go with. And the challenge for us, again, is to hold on to the fact that no matter where I'm at, no matter where I'm at, he is who he always has been. And then when he talks about this next part, which says your right hand is filled with righteousness. What do we say the right hand is symbolic of? Strength. Strong. Strength. Be strong. Yeah. yeah, strength and power. Yeah. And so not only is it strong, but it's filled with righteousness. That means he uses his power in the right way. Oh, that Now, again, that's going to take some faith because we would use his power a little differently. There's some situations that I take care of. I got some bills. If I had the right hand of God, any of y'all see the any of you see the movie Bruce Almighty? It was it, it was uh it. yeah Bruce Almighty the, <laughs> the Bruce Almighty movie is is pretty funny, but it, it's uh Jim Carrey and um he gets the the powers of God and so he's doing all this stuff for himself. And it looks the way most of us would. We just doing stuff to make, he's clearing traffic out of his way. He's doing everything for himself. But the power of God obviously doesn't work that way. And so we get a little suspect of God when he doesn't do things our way. You know why? Because we see God as a divine butler. Right. We see him as the waiter who comes to the table. How may I serve you? And when he doesn't serve us right, when he doesn't serve us fast enough, we doubt who he is. And so again, mindset shift. He is God. So if he has not acted, that means he's got a reason. That's right. Because his power is filled with his right hand, is filled with righteousness. He only does the right thing at the right time, in the right way. And that's going to require we have faith. Because it's not going to happen when we want him. Uh, what, what, what they say, he, he doesn't always show up when you want him. But he shows up right on time. He shows up right on time. And that's a thing. We love the song, but we hate living it. <laughs> when we sing the song, oh, oh, yeah. And then mm -hmm. when we're in a mess, why ain't God here? Where God at? I thought God was real. Mm -hmm. you, you just got done singing. He going to show up on time. And mm -hmm. whenever he shows up, that's on time. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, finishing out the psalm. It says, Mount Zion rejoices, the villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments. Somebody got, let me see, who, who I got out there? Um, Miss Washington, can you read verse 11 for me from your version? Yeah, Psalm 48. Yeah, Psalm 48, verse 11. Let, let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments. Does anybody have a different word there besides judgments? Village. What say, Sean? Village. Okay, we a have village. village in there. But anything besides judgments, does everybody's version say judgments? Man, say judgments. Okay. All right. So when we look at judgments here, we're looking at the decisions that he makes. So he, look. So what is he saying? Hey, everything the the the, the Mount Zion, the, the place of worship, it yeah. celebrates. Why? It celebrates because of your decisions. Do we celebrate the decisions of God or do we just celebrate the things that we want? Do we just celebrate when we get what we want or do we celebrate because God, you know what you were doing? Uh, Sister Daphne Moore has uh, verse 11, her says acts of just justice. What you do, we're celebrating what you do. And we need to celebrate what he does if he is God because whatever he does is right. That's what he said. Yeah. But too often, we only want to celebrate when it's right for us, <clears throat> when it makes sense to me, when it feels good to me. And that's selling God short. All right? And, so, and that's selfish. That's very selfish. 
I mean, we, we, we have to come to grips. One of the things that we should be dealing with every time we read the Bible is overcoming our own selfishness. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I used to God think... Does, God is going to do what he says he's going to do. Yeah, no. Absolutely. And that yeah. won't always line up with what we think should happen. Right. Yeah. And that's the part where we've got to get ourselves off the throne and let God be God. Because of a lot of our a lot of our issues, I really believe, is the fact that we want to be God so bad. Because we think we know better. And in one, I think somebody said, you know, when Satan um, when Satan got kicked out of heaven, they said he was probably a teenager. Mm. Because he knew everything and he wanted to sit in the big chair. Yes. And, and, and you know, it's funny. It's funny. Most of us who have teenagers or had teenagers, we say, yeah, that's right. And I swear God's looking at us going, you still a teenager. Because uh-huh. we think we know better than him. Well, God, you should have really done that. If I was, if I was in charge, I would have done it this way. Isn't that what Job said? Job said, this don't make no sense. And God uh-huh. said, um, Excuse me, where were you when I built the mountains? I don't remember asking your advice. And so we've got to get over our thought that we are the end all be all of everything and we know everything. And God is that because that will take a lot of prayer. When I figure out that I don't have to fix y'all, I became a much better pastor when I figured out it was not my job to fix y'all. No. Now, now, truth is, none of y'all broken. But <laughs> back when I had other other members, I had to fix them. I thought I had to Speak fix them. For yourself, y'all, them. Speak for yourself, Pastor. Speak for yourself, Pastor. Just and, said the Lord. Because be, because I, I I had taken it on me. I'm the pastor. I got to preach them happy. I got to get them saved. I got to do all this. And God was like, if you're going to do all that, what am I supposed to do? Yes. <laughs> this is his job. And it was frustrating because yeah. y'all wasn't getting right. I mean, I'm sorry, those other people weren't getting right. <laughs> and finally, God and I had to have a conversation. He said, it's not your job to get them right. That's right. Poor little Bobby Payne. That's my job. Yes. And, and so once I got off of that throne and I let him be the pastor and I was just going to help him, oh, yeah. pastoring got to be way more fun. Yeah. And I would bet you if you would do that as a parent, if you would do that as a spouse, if you would do that as an employee and let God handle all that stuff, and you just do that little thing you can do. Mm-hmm. All he told me was is to awesome. preach and teach. Yes. That's all I got to do. It, I, oh, oh, I can do that. Yeah. And he'll take care of everything else. That's right. And, and so do we trust him enough? Do we trust him enough to believe that what he's doing is the right thing? Mm-hmm. And his timing is right. His actions are right. And if we would just submit ourselves to do what he has made us to do, we would be much better off. All right? And so he finishes up the last three verses in this song. They say, walk about Zion, go around her counter towers, consider well her ramparts, view her citadels, that you may tell of them to the next generation. For this is for this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. And so the picture that we have here is, you know, remember we started this psalm in verse uh, four, talking about the kings joining forces. They're attacking the city. When the battle's all over, the psalm will say, walk around and see what God has done. Mm. Walk around and see how we're still standing. God is telling you right now to walk around your life and see how he got you through that sickness. Walk around your life and see how he got you through that financial issue. Walk through your life and see how he got you through COVID. Walk through your life and see how he got you through all that stuff. And when you see it, you should celebrate and tell somebody about it. And when you tell them, you tell them, verse 14, this God is our God. Not just when times are good. Not just for a little while. But he is our God forever. Uh And he will be our guide forever to the end of time to the end even to the end Mm -hmm. it's something Mm -hmm. about uh you know every once in a while i'm sure you guys have had it you've been maybe in a store somewhere and you know back in the day when i used to go to walmart and actually let people come and talk to me um before they had to back up 
Uh, Somebody would come to me and they'd say, hey, excuse me, do you know where such and such is? I don't know why. Sonia, I think they thought I worked there. <laughs> I don't know why they thought I worked in Walmart. were there enough. <laughs> I don't understand why the they thought I in. worked in Walmart. They probably thought you was the manager. You went in there with your tie. No, 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 no. They thought shirt. he was the basket person. He thought, thought he was the deliverer. They thought he was everything <laughs> in Walmart. What's the manager? <laughs> it wasn't the manager. Vicky, oh, I was good. <laughs> Oh, man, he was taking people groceries to the car, putting them in the car. He was taking no, he and putting them in the wedding. You did that. Yes, he did. Vicky, yes, he you did. have moved up to uh, top member status. Sister Lampkins, you are dropping fast right now. I got to tell you. <laughs> you need to mute them, Pastor. Huh? You need to mute them. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sister Yola, I was giving him a good praise, and you I was, were. uh, yes. You were. That's so why I got to be mute. Me. I'm going to so mute he, myself. Well, so I was telling you. Here's I what happened before y'all go. So I'm about to mute all y'all. Here's what I was happened. Telling the truth. So well, I would, I'd be in Walmart and somebody would ask me, hey, where is such and such? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would look at them and say, oh, well, if you go down that way and go over there. But there were other times I'd say, come on with me and I'll take you there. See? That's the beauty of God in this scripture right here. He said he will be our guide even to the end. He is not going to stop. Somewhere, was he, I don't feel no ways tired. He didn't bring me this far to leave me. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's not just a song, that's a fact. And as you walk through this life, and some of us have been walking with God for a long time, and we have those moments where we think he just kind of turned off somewhere, and we all by ourselves, but this is he will be our guide to the end. And if you're not at the end, he's still guiding you. Well, I don't like the way this looks. I asked you how it looks. Trust the guide. I've shared with you before, my wife ain't online, so I can tell this story. <laughs> Well, it's not really a story. Actually, not by my wife. It's about some, one of the women that I live with. When oh, I'm too late. With too late. One of the women <laughs> that I live with, and we're listening to that. We're in a strange city, so we got the GPS on. The GPS is trying to guide us to the end. But we'll drive, and we'll get to a point, and GPS will say, turn left, and we'll look left and go, that don't look good. Oh, wow. We're going to go straight. Uh, uh, uh. That's what directions. Why, why? Why? We don't know where we at. Uh -uh. You have never been in a. Uh, you've never been in a pandemic. Right. And when God says turn left, guess what? You should probably do. Turn left. Turn left. But okay, well, that don't look right, God. Yeah. Have you ever been here before? If mm -hmm. you've never been here before, trust the guide. Because guess what? He's been here before. Yeah, the guide is the guide because the guide knows where the guide is going. Right. You are not the guide. I am not the guide. God is the guide. And if we would trust him, it, there's a verse in Isaiah that says, you will hear a voice say to you, this is the way. Walk in it. That, that, that's that voice saying, turn left here. Don't go there. Stop. Make a U-turn. Oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, and then we get mad. Then now we yell at the GPS because we lost. <laughs> GPS then said recalculating for the last 25 miles. <laughs> <laughs> but we yell at the GPS because we decided to go somewhere else. We, I ain't going to church no more. That don't work. It don't work when you don't listen. All right, so Psalm 48, he's our God. He's, uh, he's our God forever. And ever, and he will guide us to the end. Anybody, any questions or comments about the uh, 48th Psalm? <laughs> All right. Let's go to Psalm 49. Sister Lorna. Lorna. Hi. Would you mind reading for us the 49th Psalm? Actually, read verses 1 through 13. 1 through yeah, let me get my big print Bible. <laughs> my eyes have been messing up lately. Okay, hold on. Listen to this, all you people. Pay attention, everyone in the world. 
high and low, rich and poor. Listen, for my words are wise and my thoughts are filled with insight. I listen carefully to many proverbs and solve riddles with inspiration from a heart. Why should I fear when trouble comes, when enemies surround me? They trust in their wealth and they boast of great riches. Uh, yet they cannot redeem themselves from death mm -hmm. by by paying a ransom to God. Redemption does not come so easily for no one can ever pay enough to live forever and never see the grave. Those who are wise must finally die just like the foolish and the senseless, leaving all their wealth behind. The grave is their eternal home where they will stay forever. They may name their estates after themselves, but their fame will not last. They will die just like animals. Mm. <laughs> that's kind of, that's bad. <laughs> this is the fate of fools, though they are remembered as being wise. All right, thank you. All right. So somebody tell me what's going on. What 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 what's the psalmist talking about in those first thirteen verses? When you die, you can't take anything with you. Okay. Well, you know, I like that my version say this is the fate of those who trust in themselves. And when Laura was reading all of that, and then she said, "Oh, this is bad." Until she <laughs> And very, you said it. He just cleared it up. up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And mm -hmm. so, so who is this? Who is this psalm written to? People who trust in themselves. No material, worldly thing. Okay. Fool, foolish people. Uh, um. Okay. So, somebody. Hey, mom. Mm -hmm. Can you read verses one and two? Hear this, all peoples, give ear, all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. So who's this written to? Who's everybody. Written to? Everybody. Everybody in the world. Everybody. Rich everybody. 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 No matter how rich you are, how poor you are, everybody. Everybody. Because um, everybody needs to learn this lesson. Yeah. One of those things that we get, sometimes we get the feeling like we've arrived that I, I don't need to hear this. Oh, I'm not rich, I don't need to hear this, but please know that everybody on this phone call, there are about a million people around the world that would kill to be where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. They see what you got, like, they, they, they would do a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. Because in our eyes, we are incredibly rich. And, and so don't think, you know, because these are relative, rich and poor are very relative terms. All right. And so this is this is a song because we all need to pay attention. You know, we, we probably in the background. I wish I had it queued up. I, I, I play the song. Um, the more money I got, the more problems I see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you don't play that song. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't been saved that long. <laughs> I, I ain't been saved that long. But it's a fact. Mm -hmm. It's a fact, and, and here's here's what's funny. We will all sit here and talk about, yeah, it's a fact. Oh yes, Pastor, we don't trust in riches. And what do we spend all of our time doing? Trying to get paid. Yeah. The rapper said, "Get rich or die trying." Uh -huh. And the psalmist has a response to that. You gonna die regardless, and being rich will not help you. That's right. And so I, I love this psalm because uh, when you get down to verse four, uh, verse five, I mean, he said, why should I fear when he, somebody tell me, why should you fear when evil days come? I don't know, it's a rhetorical question. Sure. Who said that one? Hmm? What'd you say, Sister Smith? Oh, Lord, was I on, you? on mute? <laughs> <laughs> Now, now who's being mute? You a pastor? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry.
I love y'all. I love y'all so much. <laughs> so this is a profound question. Why should I fear when evil days come? That's true. What 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 is about because we only fear well we usually fear things when we don't feel safe you know you see a yeah. lion anybody ever gone to the zoo and saw the lion and was afraid no you weren't afraid why because the lion was in a cage okay. right. now yeah. if the lion was out of the cage yes. you you should probably be afraid. Exactly. But when the lion, it, it it would make no sense for you to walk up to the cage. Oh, oh, look at oh, look at the lion. Why are you afraid? The lion is caged. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? God has your enemies caged. Mm -hmm. He prowls around like a roaring lion, but he's prowling around in a cage. He is in a cage created by God. Mm -hmm. And so, why are we why are we afraid? Why are we afraid of what's going on around us? Because we've already been told it's going to come again. Why am I afraid that it's raining outside? They told me it was gonna rain. Get your umbrella and go do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. God has told us from the beginning, trouble's going to come. Yes. Why would you yes. be afraid of the rain? God told him, hey, it's gonna rain, you better build a boat. Um, now maybe we should be afraid if we don't build a boat. Yeah. But if we do what God says, Maybe we don't have to be afraid. Why should I be afraid when evil days come? Why should I be afraid when wicked deceivers surround me? Anybody ever had some wicked deceivers? Mm -hmm. I, I, I like to, because like I said, my verse says, virgin says, surround me. That's more than one. That, that's a lot of wicked deceivers. But still, the psalmist asks, why should I be afraid? We should. Even though they are around, they are not in control. Mm -hmm. Right? So, wow. yeah. and not only them, but those who trust in their wealth and boast of their great riches. It doesn't, you know, they got more money, they got this, but you've got God. Mm -hmm. Balance it on the scales. They've got all the political clout, but you've got God. Well, they've got all of it. Are you trying to tell me that the things that the unbeliever has, the things that those who are attacking us has, is greater than what you have? No, sir. But you have taught us in this, in times we're going to have trouble in this, what we call storm of life. But he sent his son, Jesus, who, who sent us. He's going to be our protector. He's going to be our umbrella because we're going to go through the storm. It's going to rain on us. But he sent his son, Jesus, to cover us. And that sounds great if we do it. Mm -hmm. It sounds great if we trust him. Yes. Because the, here's the thing. You know, people, I, I've had people say this to me. He says, why should I trust God? I got problems. Well, you're going to have problems anyway. Go ahead. I, I mean, you got problems anyway. So if you got problems anyway, you might as well go with someone who actually promises to help you with your problems. I, I just, it just makes sense to me. Yeah, and maybe that's the problem. It makes sense. Someone's talking about, I think we read, what did we read? Oh, um, on Sunday, in Sunday school, it talked about uh, the, the psalmist said, uh, no, the Solomon said in Proverbs, help people, you know, you, you, you foolish people, get some common sense. Because what we what we should have learned by now in 2020, common sense is not very common. You know, it, it's just some things you just should know to do, and you don't know to do. That means it's not it's not common. And so our common sense should not come from what we think is right. Our common sense should come from the book. And if we have the book, and, and again, not just have the book, but have the book in us, then why should I be afraid? Why should I be afraid? I don't need to be afraid. I, I can still walk and do what I've got to do. And again, go back to what T.D. Jake said. Um, uh, it's okay to have fear in the car. You just can't let fear drive. Mm. And, 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 and that, that, that I, I keep saying that, but maybe because 2020 things keep coming up that would make us afraid. And, and again, please remember, please, please be clear. Being afraid, it, you know, there, there is a point for us to be cautious because we're supposed to be wise as serpents. 
God didn't tell any of us just to jump off a building. Even, even when the Satan asked Jesus, told Jesus, jump off the building, and you'll be safe. Jesus said, I, look, don't tempt God. And if Jesus ain't going to tempt God, guess what? Your pastor might be the smartest, not be the smartest dude in the world, but he ain't going to do it either. But then there's a difference than when we're talking about, I won't do it. I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. And what Sonia will tell me all the time, because Sonia is my great encourager, just do it afraid. Uh-huh. Do it afraid. And y'all better be glad she says that, because I probably would have quit preaching a long time ago, because I'd be scourged. But I got to do it afraid. I've got to do it afraid. Okay? And all of us have to do it afraid because we can't let the fear stop us because the enemy's in the cage. All right? And those who think they've got it all together, those who have all the money, God's making one thing very clear. You going to die. Yes. And what is your money going to do for you then? Nothing. Nothing because you can't take it with you. You can't take it with you. I even like the fact that he goes as far as talking about, and I like, I like Lorna's version, even though you put your name on stuff, which, hey, we ought to recognize that right now because there are a whole lot of folks that die with their name on stuff. Yeah. And mm-hmm. all them names getting pulled down, <laughs> mm-hmm. taken off, removed. They thought they was doing something with all that money. Yeah. And 40 years later, is coming off. And so when we place our trust in that, when we place my value as a human being, somebody asked me the other day, you know, what would really make you happy? Who having my name on a building? Well, that ain't working for a whole lot of folks right now. Uh So maybe what should make us really happy, what should make us really fulfilled is doing the will of God. If we do the will of God, that will let, nobody can take that away from us. And the will of God begins with getting saved and then it continues with living saved. Because all of the money in the world is not going to make a difference in the end. God is not going to ask for your bank book when you get to heaven. He's going to ask, what did you do with my son? Well, you know, I didn't have time for your son because I was working seven days a week. Wow. That ain't going to work. And the psalmist is very clear about that. And as, uh, as we already said, you can't take it with you. And uh, what is it? Verse 13. This is the fate of those who trust in themselves. And each one of us, this is back. I mean, I I love the way it's circled all the way back. We talk about selfishness. I've got to make this happen. I've got to make this work. I've got to do this. I've got to get this done. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to. That's almost what Satan said just before he got kicked out. Mm. I want to be on the throne. I will ascend to be like the most high. I will. I will. I will. Uh, Me, me, me. Yeah. Me, 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 me. Mine, 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 mine. Mm -hmm. And we've got to break. Again, we we think it's only kids. It's one thing when the two-year-old does it. It's something else when the 42-year-old does it. And sometimes we live that way that, it, again, it's all about me. I got to have my way. You know, in, um, oh, shoot, one of Paul's letters, he, he says, tell you, Odia and Syntyche, is how you actually pronounce it, um, to get along. And I, I looked at those names, and I couldn't pronounce them. I said, oh, you know who the, those two ladies are? That's you owe me and soon touchy. Because some of us walk around like everybody owes us something. Oh. And so, and the rest of us walk around because we touchy. Every time somebody say something, we get offended because it's got to be about us. And we've got to back up from that so that we can live the life that God wants to. Because what that's telling me is, we, or that's telling God and telling us, should be telling us, that we are living for ourselves. We are living by ourselves. We are living by our own strength and what we do and what we can do. Why are you upstairs? Hey. I hear it. Okay. I, I, I got interlopers, Miss Smith. <laughs> interlopers have come into my inner sanctum. <laughs> I, <I'm... laughs> so, all right. So where was I before the interlopers? I didn't even think she could walk upstairs. That's okay, go away. Oh, you're interrupted. Oh, you're, I'm, I'm, I'm losing focus. Okay, so... Uh, what does Selah mean? 
Pause and to think pause about it. To think about it. Pause and think about it. And so what do you think in that in that in that script in that section of scripture? What do you think? What do you think God wants us to think about? You're muted, Dad. Pleasing him. Absolutely. Pleasing him instead of pleasing who? Myself. Myself. Yeah, ourselves. Ourselves. Because wealth, for whatever reason, we believe wealth will please us. If I just get a little more, if I just get a little more, and it will never be enough, as Sister Daphne said uh, on Facebook there, it'll never be enough. You know, the rich person goes to bed every night worried about how, how they're going to make more and not lose what they got. Mm -hmm. And it's a consistent struggle. Mm -hmm. And then I got the poor man who worried about how to get more. And everybody's worried about the money. And God said, I shall supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. Yeah. And, and, and so we, we've got to pause and think, what is my relationship with money? What is my relationship with the, where, I, where do I find my identity? You know, uh, I, I've dealt with, with some women who go through this severe thing when their kids leave home because they've identified themselves as a mother for so long. And when the kids are gone, they don't know who they are anymore. And I'm not saying you're not supposed to be a mother, but your identity should not be wrapped up in being a mother because you should not wrap up your identity. I know you, yes. You should not wrap your identity in anything that's going to change. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I wrapped my identity for a long time in that I was an Air Force officer. Oh. And then all of a sudden, the Air Force told me, we don't want you no more. And I was, I was about as close to depression as I've ever been because I didn't know who I was because my identity was caught up in being an officer. And God is telling these people, don't catch your identity up in your money because it will not help you. It will not save you. Oh. Wrap your identity up in God, because oh. God won't change. Oh. And, and so I don't know who this is for, but some of us, we just got to, again, yes, you got to have money to pay your bills. God understands, God understands that more than anybody. But when we wrap our identity up in anything besides him, we are going to be disappointed. All right? Questions or comments about those first 13 verses? Okay. All right. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to put a, we're, we're going to put a pin there and we will do the second half of the Psalm next week. Cause we're at, we're at time and uh, I'm going to let y'all go, even though I want to keep going, but I'm going to let y'all go. Cause I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm considerate of your time. Pastor, go on, go on another eight minutes. You go to 740 anyway. Come on, Pastor. It's over, it's over now. <laughs> no, let's, come on, Pastor. Let's start fresh. Oh, like, like I like that's a good one. Let's start for that's a good one. All right. So um to uh Pastor, to, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. I, I don't really remember your whole question earlier, but we we did clarify that it's written to everybody, whether you're rich or poor. Oh, yes, yes. When uh, later Lauren was reading about the faith of those that trust in themselves. So mm -hmm. that gives me hope. Because all the things she was reading, and when it said, oh, this don't sound good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it might have been addressed to all of us, but it's our choice whether or not we get them in faith. That, like, all those scriptures. Is that right? No, again. Again, we started with this with this thought. God said it. Yes. I believe it. Mm -hmm. that it. Will you do it? Will you do it? Yes. Yes. That settles it. Because yes. what we do with what we claim, what, what we do with what we claim we believe in God said, that will settle our lives. Right. And so the challenge for us as we read this verse, even though I don't feel like that I, right now, today, on June 24th, 2020, that I am serving myself and I'm serving money, I need to make sure that on June 25th, right. I'm not serving myself and serving money. Because we've got to be very careful and pay attention to these things so we don't slide back and slide into something. Backslide. I, I, oh, I'm good. I'm arrived. I, I talked to one guy told me, oh, I'm done with sin. I don't sin no more. 
I was like, well, actually, you just did because you just lied. Yes, right? so <laughs> we don't arrive, and we've got to keep walking. I've, I've shared with you guys the, the statement, and again, I, I've never done this before, please. But if you've ever tried to walk up a down escalator, mm -hmm. escalators coming down, I've never done this, of course, but I've heard of people doing this. Mm -hmm. If you try to walk up a down escalator, as long as you keep moving, you can go up. But the minute you stop, you don't stay still. You go backwards. The Christian life is walking up a down escalator. We are, we are on the bottom and we are trying to reach the relationship with God. We are, try, we, we are trying to be better than we are. We are trying to advance the holy, holy, holy. And as long as we are on and we are moving and we are doing what we're supposed to be doing, well, we're getting there and life is getting better and God's blessings are flowing and woo, this is good. And one day, you know what? I don't need to pray today. You know what? I got something else to do. I ain't going to church on Sunday. You know what? I need to buy a new grill. I ain't, I ain't tithing. And we wonder why things, things don't seem right. I, I still believe in God. Yeah, but we're not moving. Actually, we are moving. We're moving in the wrong direction. There's a reason why this is called the Christian walk. It's not called a Christian sit. It's not called a Christian stand around and look. It's the Christian walk. There should be progress being made. And I think the song said, I'm going up higher. Mm -hmm. But we're only going to get up higher if we keep moving forward. Okay. All right. Any other comments, questions? Psalm 48 and 49. No, sir. Okay. All right. Um, thank you so much. I do want to send a special shout out to uh, Sister Daphne Moore online. She was all over Facebook uh, wearing her fingers out, uh, uh, typing in answers, and it's so good to see all of y'all. Uh, Rodney and Deborah, glad you guys made it on. And uh, to all of these, to, to, the, uh, to the Eglin people, oh, I just, I just love the folks in Florida. Oh, yay, Florida. And uh, Lorna, it's always good to see you. I just like the way you read scripture. I just need you to call it. This would be my official scripture reading <laughs> when Jackie ain't around. Um, <laughs> Jay, oh, Sonia. Hey! Sonia hey! <laughs> you get it, Miss Virginia. Get it. Hey! Get it. Yeah, Miss Virginia. So you can't get him. Now Virginia wants some love. Yeah. Yeah, uh, get him. So, uh, no, that's uh, all right. So, hey, you know, Brother Wade was missing tonight. I got to find out where he was. All right. So, um, you're still on the telephone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I spoke to her earlier, and I'm so glad that she's on and able to hear. So, um, so a couple of things that I, I mentioned this at the beginning. I do want to mention again at the end. Uh, one, please keep Sister Lois Bryant and her family in prayer. Um, I still do not have any information about the funeral for Miss Alberta, but as soon as I know something, I will most certainly let you know. Also, um, keep Sister Karen Turner and her family in prayer. Tragic death of a cousin of Karen's, and um, uh, so they're they're in that the suddenness of that uh, of that struggle. So I ask that you would pray for them as well. Um, and our prayer is for God to show us how to help. Let's not just do, do you know something, huh? Do you know the name? I do okay. not. Okay. She did not give me the name. She just said it was a cousin. Okay. So. I talked to Sister Green today. Uh, it was her sister. It was Karen first cousin. It was her sister that lived upstate uh, daughter. So it was Karen first cousin. Okay. All right. So yeah. So let's just keep that whole family in prayer. Um, I do want to shout out to the family in Ohio. Uh, it's good to know that you guys are online. And uh, I'm just, uh, I love Bible study. So I thank y'all for being a part of our study. Um, let's pray. Eternal God, forgive us. Forgive us for walking in fear. Forgive us for trusting in ourselves, in our pocketbooks, in our jobs, in our careers, in our family situations. Forgive us for living like we had all the answers. Lord, tonight you have revealed to us that you are the God whose name extends to the end of the earth. You have revealed that you are the God who will guide us. Yes. 
-hmm. till the end. Lord, help us to trust you more right now. Why should we be afraid? We have no reason because you are in control. So now, Lord, we, we've said it. We've nodded about it. We've amended it. Now, Lord, help us to live it. Our mouths have claimed it. Our minds say we believe it. Now, Lord, help our feet join in the party that we will continue to walk towards holiness, that we will continue to walk towards righteousness, that we will live up to what you have already made us when you saved us. And Lord God, we want to continue to lift up uh, the Bryant family and lift up Karen and her family as they deal with the deaths of their family members. Lord, they, they are part of us. And so your word says that we should mourn with those who mourn. And so, Lord, we are mourning, but we are not mourning as those who have no hope. We have hope in Christ. And, Lord, help us to bring that hope to them, not in any old way, but, Lord, the way you prescribe it. Yes, Show us how to comfort them. Yes, yes. Show us how to get out of our own heads, that we might meditate on your goodness yes. and that we might share the goodness that we are meditating on with those who are hurting. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the timing of your word. And I thank you for what you're going to do in our lives as we walk in your word. It's in Jesus' most holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Man. Thank amen. you very much for your time hey, and attention. Hey, y'all. Hey, 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 how you doing? How you doing? Isn't it, y'all? Good rain up. Yes, we did. It's not raining now. Yes, it did. Yes, sir. Oh, we got some earlier, but not now. Okay. It's storming here. It's storming here. Oh, it'll be up here later. <laughs> Good night, Facebook. <laughs> Well, it's already true. Ms. Washington, you don't live in Niceville with the nice lady over there. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? She Ooh, used to it. She, she used to it. She moved, she left town. She oh. in the country. Yeah, I, li I live, about live around the corner from each other. Well, I live about 20 miles away now. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. We did once upon a time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. See how we love people, Miss Son. <laughs> okay, okay, you okay. <laughs> hey, lady, I don't even see you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I love you. I love all y'all set marriage people. <laughs> we love y'all, Mother Payne. Uh, thank you for that Karen, Hello, Linda. Payne with us. Hi, Linda. How are you doing? Biggie, I'm not talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Biggie. You, you got me in trouble. You got me in trouble.